Coach, would you like to start with an opening statement? Sure. Uh, what a fantastic atmosphere to uh, compete in. Does it feel like playoff across? Uh, or maybe that's because Maryland and Virginia play often in the uh, NCAA tournament uh, three of the last four years. But, um, you know, just uh, an intense crowd, great, uh, two great teams getting after it. And, um, you know, we were, uh, we were fortunate to come out ahead this time uh, to break this cycle of uh, the last three where Coach Tillman's troops uh, beat us and beat us soundly a couple of those times. Um, today, um, Really big for Matt Nunes. Matt Nunes uh, had not been on the positive side against the Terrapins in the past. And granted, he didn't have a ton of saves, but he had some saves early, some big saves early. But we weren't calm down and poised with our clearing. We're a very good clearing team, as you can see statistically. And to have a couple fails in that first quarter um, was discombobulating. Uh, but Matt kept the Terrapins to two goals in that first quarter when they could have gotten um, you know, a lot more ahead of us, a lot more further away from us, excuse me. Um, the te our team defense made a, a, a one-game statement. So I mean, it's not a season statement. We made a one-game statement. We've been struggling. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, I could learn a couple things from Tony Bennett. <laughs> and uh, um, we've, uh, we've, we've, you know, it just wasn't to the level that we need to compete when you watched us against Hopkins, when you watched us against Towson. And uh, we, we challenge ourselves, all of us, from the, the defensive coaches uh, right down to the, uh, um, you know, every player, long stick, short stick, deep midi. Um, and um, we, were, we were fortunate today. We were fortunate that uh, uh, we, we, this, the work we put in, um, we were able to take away um, some of the known threats and, uh, and give us some shots that Matt Nunes was able to make saves on. Um, individual credit, I certainly want to point out Cole Kastner. Uh, Erks is an elite attackman. That speed and his ability to score, um, he's an all-American attackman. And uh, uh, we are, uh, we're very grateful that we have uh, number 39. You know, three years ago it was Project 39. <laughs> and uh, you know, what Cole Kastner was able to do today with that matchup uh, was fantastic. I won't keep rambling, just but let me stop there. But I thought Ajax Zapatello uh, on the other side was very good too. Uh, Connor Schellenberger wasn't scoring his points uh, with Ajax on him. Connor was taking advantage of some switches or uh, some transitions. So I thought you saw two elite defenders out there, 39 for one team and one number one for the other. Well, you alluded to the previous losses with them the last few years. And I think back to that game last year, maybe emotionally you guys didn't quite have the right Yeah, we, uh, we, we had a great week of practice. And you sounds like coach speak, you know, but it, it was, I just talked to the team here post game. I said, fellas, this is the product of how we competed this week in practice. The scout offense and the scout defense gave us the best looks we've had all year. And I don't want our reserve players accepting their roles, but they embrace their roles for this week. They all, they're fighting to get up that depth chart. They want more playing time, I get it. But it was, we had an amazing week of preparation. Um, speaking about last year, last year was a really difficult loss because of how we've been humbled in 22 by maybe the best team of the decade. And, you know, arguably it was gonna be go down as one of the best of all time. And we felt, all right, 23 is time. You know, they graduated a lot. We got most of our team back here. And uh, John Tillman outcoached me. Uh, their players outplayed our players, and they, they, they left Clockner with a win. And, um, and so I, I just, the amount of respect I have for Coach Tillman, his staff, and how these men compete in battle, um, he's simply one of the best. And, um, and so we learned from that, and um, we were fortunate to play well and, and, and uh, earn the win today. But it's a rivalry. There's no question about it. There's a, it's, a, it's an incredible bat. You know, it's, it was, it's too bad for a few years it wasn't happening. Um, but since 2019, um, 
the rekindling and redefining what this rivalry is all about. Um, this is just about as good as it gets in college across. You could, you could definitely feel that rivalry early when it got a little chippy and felt like you guys were able to channel that into what you did when you won the ground ball battle and you forced with kind of this long characteristic turn up. Let's just talk about what you saw from your defense and then obviously winning ground balls. Yeah. Our, uh, again, I think our defense was giving up a lot, too many looks in the crease. Uh, and we were exposed against Hopkins and Towson inside. We were actually exposed before that. Matt Nunes was just standing on top of his head, you know, in some of those earlier games against Michigan and Ohio State and Richmond. And, um, and so we went to task with fellas, we gotta do a much better job in the crease. And so we did things a little, we, we really reinforced it. It wasn't like a big difference in strategy. It was almost like, Lars, you had this phrase, let's be brilliant at the basics. Let's get back to our stance, our crease coverage. And that started Sunday. Uh, we practice on Sundays. We take Mondays off. It started Sunday, and um, and so I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how the Maryland coaching staff approached it, but they may have said, been saying, "Hey, look, the crease could be wide open. Look, look at these clips. Like five games of a lot of clips of the wide the crease being wide open." Um, and so give our give credit to George Fulton, uh, Griffin Kologi, and Cole Kastner, Michael Prestopino. We really did well of owning the crease and sliding when we had coverage, the second slide, to protect the inside. And that was, that was a big difference, just us executing our slide schemes at a much higher level than, who it wasn't good the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Coach, you led wire to wire against a pretty good team. What do you attribute to being able to kind of control the game? Wow, we led wire to wire, really. Wow. Um, it was two to one, Maryland. Two, two one, okay. okay. First, and then they went up two one. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you, I get, yeah, we, we did get up to their 4 5 2, didn't we? But that first quarter didn't feel like we were in control because, again, we had those failed clears. And, you know, I think we've had like one failed clear a game. And all of a sudden we had two failed clears in the first quarter. And, uh, um, yeah, and it, it just it didn't feel like we were in control by any, by any means. But it was, um, again, for me, I really, again, I'm going to hammer that coach speak. When you play how you practice. You know, and uh, you know, we're not Allen Iverson and talking about pro football or basketball players. We're talking about college athletes, and they're still young and impressionable. And if we compete well in practice, this is the results are going to be much better. Um, I, I do want to give credit. I thought Co Coach Cassis and Coach Greco and Coach Turner, the game plan we put in. Yes, we did lose at the faceoff X, but it wasn't a landslide against one of the best faceoff men in the country, Luke Weirman. Um, we shot well on one of the best goalies in the country. Um, and um, our man down had a couple big stops there in the, in the late, in the, both in the fourth, no, I guess in the third and the fourth quarter. So it was um, a really nice job with the coaching staff. Okay. Lars, what did you like about the Chess play today? I felt like his yeah. mentality, aggressiveness kind of was contagious throughout the game. I know. We, that, I mean, he's a big man. And what he did today is what we've been, you know, encouraging him, you know, just pleading with him to do and Maryland's defensive game plan was to win a lot of matchups and they did again give Zapatello credit for what he did um, you know McCabe Millen was kept quiet except for that one in the uh, the fourth quarter when he came down the alley and stuck it but you know our short stick we weren't winning a lot of our matchups against our short stick defensive midfielders their short stick defensive midfielders did a really nice job guarding Colsey and Boyd and, and Sunderland and so Essentially saying, hey, shots, I know you got a long ball, but you gotta, you, someone's got to win a matchup here. And uh, we, we challenged him, and boy, did he step up to the occasion, didn't he? And uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's, he's had a couple of these days. Our hope is that this isn't just a, a blip. You know, could this be the breakout? Could this be, we see it in practice. And, uh, but yeah, it, what Griffin shuts today was massive for our offense, you know, because that, that's, that, that, defense that Maryland run. It, it, there's, there's not a lot of gimmies out there. It, it's, it's hard to earn a slide. It's hard to get to the goal. And then you got that great goal behind them. The, the, the early fail from your side in the last five minutes or so inside was not that. You, you guys played a pretty clean game overall. I was shocked when I saw the turnovers. Um, and um, yeah, I, you know, it was a, uh, that, that, that was big, you know, uh, that you're right. And that, that, that helps when you have Connor Schellenberger, you know, quarterback in the offense, and let's make sure he touches the ball, and let's be clean with our looks, and 
that part was that was that was, that was really good. I I was really happy with our ride, you know, and get our ten man ride going and, and create some turnovers and and uh, the hustle and then backing up the missed shots. You know, you got, we're all holding our breath, right? You know, if that Maryland long shot goes in, you know, bad coaching by Coach Tiffy. You know, they miss it, we back it up. It's like okay, whew, got away with it. You know, and. Uh, um, so I was I was happy that we were able to create some turnovers in our ride as well. That was that was a big day for us. Right. Just to circle back, how much fun is this rivalry for you? You seem to enjoy it I, I do. immensely. I do because, again, you know, post game, uh, you know, win or lose, Coach Tillman and I talk for a couple minutes, and uh, you know, the winner's elated and the loser's gutted, but we, we get it. You know, he's. Uh, He's one of the best in his business, uh, if not the best. You know, we look at his track record, what he's done here. It's been amazing. And um, I have, you know, I've, I've, I've sat in front of the, re the reporting staff after losing by 12 goals to his team and said, you know, wow, you know, what a great setting to play lacrosse. And I still say the same. You know, it's a, this is a, it's a fantastic opportunity to guide and lead men. And Coach Tillman does it the right way. And, and um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep doing it our way with our cultural Thursdays and reading and book clubs. and. Uh, uh, and then uh, coming out here and trying to be cerebral warriors.